So, uh, what happens, guys, when uh, you get excited, you want to go to that event, you get those tickets, you buy them, you tell your friends you're going to go, and then you get an emergency call, the emergency call that says, hey, we got to go to the Caymans. What you going to do? We're going to sell our tickets. Let's talk. What's up, guys? Welcome back. My name's Shiraz here on Thumbs Up Run, where we talk about buying tickets, selling tickets, and making sure that you have all the fun with your tickets. I know we talk all about things like buying those tickets and having fun with tickets, but we've never really, you know, explored the selling side of getting tickets. So today, we're going to talk all about selling those tickets, specifically how to sell them on Ticketmaster. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and little bell icon so you never miss out on another episode ever, ever again, because there's lots of things that you need to just kind of make sure you're always in the loop, in the know, in the, in the action. You gotta, you gotta be right there on the edge of your seat to make sure you never miss out. So, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Moving on into what we actually wanna talk about today, we're talking about actually listing your tickets, selling your tickets on Ticketmaster. This isn't to say that there aren't other ways to sell your tickets, other places to sell your tickets, other things you can do to actually get those tickets from you to someone else. But today, we're talking about how to actually list those tickets on Ticketmaster, how to actually price those tickets on Ticketmaster, and what to do once those tickets sell on Ticketmaster. Let's dive into it. Very simply, what is Ticketmaster Plus? What is Ticketmaster Resale? It is essentially the only way for you to sell tickets on Ticketmaster, which will be 100% verified. You buy those tickets from the box office, you get a unique barcode. When you sell them through Ticketmaster yet again, those barcodes will become invalid once they actually sell. That's not to say they are invalid as soon as you list them. No, no, no. They're still valid, they're still real, those tickets are still good, they're still yours. But once you actually get that sale done through Ticketmaster Plus, they're no longer yours. So very simply, Get those tickets listed on Ticketmaster Plus, get them sold, they're gone. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Nothing to do, nothing to worry about. Don't have to go see anybody. Don't have to exchange some money in hands. You don't got to do nothing. Nothing to do. It's fantastic. It's a great way to actually sell your tickets. Super convenient, super easy. No real work involved for the most part. A bit of thinking, just, just a little bit. A little bit of thinking, but you know, nothing too extreme, nothing too hard, nothing too strenuous. You could do it. I trust you. I trust you to trust me to trust you. You, you are trusted by me, by you. Get it? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna dive over to the computer. I have my laptop right here. As you can see, stickers. I love stickers. I, this is a new one actually, this guy. See him? It's new, I like it. Anyway, we're gonna jump over to the laptop. We're gonna list the tickets this way. You can do it on your phone too, but this is very simple. Let's get into it. All right, so what we're gonna do, first thing you have to make sure you do is actually log into your account. Go over here. Click the little face icon, go ahead, hit the sign in button. You'll see the little logo changes once you've signed in. Click it again, go to my tickets. Now, important here, you have to make sure you go to the event that you wanna actually sell it. You're gonna see on your my tickets list, there'll be plenty of options or however many tickets you've purchased, they'll all be listed in chronological order. So go ahead, find the event you wanna list, and that's where we'll get started. As you can see on here, the Ottawa Senators versus Buffalo Sabres. On the right hand side is where all the fun actually starts to happen. What we're gonna do here is we're actually just gonna go ahead, click the sell tickets button, and we'll get into the next stages. So now you can see here, we can actually select the items to sell. You can see as well, there are these different check boxes. So if, for example, you had a set of four tickets and you only want to sell two of them, you could just select the two. Now, if I had a set of two tickets, I only want to sell one of them, that could work too. What we're gonna do here, we're actually gonna list both of them. So we go ahead, click the little check boxes. As you can see, the number updates as you go forward and remove them. You can also do it this way, select all, deselect all, lots of fun options for you. If you ever run into questions, on the side here, you can see there's a support center with live chat with an agent. Go ahead, click the launch live chat button. It'll then pre-populate all the details for that event, click start chat, and then you can go ahead, get some support that way. Now there is, this is not super instant getting to the actual agent. There is a few minutes to wait, sometimes a bit longer, potentially a lot longer. Uh, it really depends on how busy they are at that time. So that is an option for you, but again, can take some time. Anyway, moving along, very simply, click the continue button and we'll move from selecting the items to sell to actually pricing your tickets. Here, we've got a few different things. So again, list the tickets that you've listed. If you see any errors up here in the pricing of your tickets, uh, if you see any seats that are missing, for example, or any specific seats that you want to list that aren't there or vice versa, go ahead. You can go actually go down all the way to cancel listing, start again, it'll be great. So here, first thing is pricing your ticket. So, so how do you know how much you actually want to list the ticket for? How much you want to sell it for? Wait one second. Wait one second, but wait, there's more. <laughs> huh. 
Now, as you can see here, the currency is in the currency of where the event is actually taking place. So in this case, Ottawa Senators play in Ottawa, capital of Canada. We're going to be pricing in Canadian dollars. How do we price the actual ticket? You can go ahead, type in anything you want. If I want to sell it for $1,000, I can do that. However, events may include a resale price limit per ticket. Click the little icon here and you can see resale pricing restrictions, blah, 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 blah. Basically all it's saying is that there can be restrictions on both the upper limit and the lower limit. But what you might've seen is that when I typed in the one, it goes into red. It says the event has a minimum ticket price of $94.35 Canadian. Basically the event promoter, they don't want to see their tickets priced below a certain threshold, a certain market floor. For them, they're saying, okay, we want to try and maintain some level of you know, consistency and a value. And they don't want people to think, oh, if the tickets come down to be worth you know, $25, can uh, set some people off. So season seat holders who have seats next to them will be like, I pay $250 for my tickets. Ho, ho, ho. And this guy's like, no, no, I paid $25 for my tickets and it sucks to be you. And it can, it, there's a lot of problems that can arise from that type of uh, activity. So they try and limit the price floor so that it kind of keeps a certain level of value on those tickets. But now, this again, this is just me typing in what do I think, what do I know, I know absolutely nothing. This event could be worth millions of dollars and I'd be pricing it way, way too low. So what do we have here? Ticketmaster, they actually have a few tools that we can go ahead and use. First off here, you can see tickets for sale in your section. So you can see they're priced between this 104 and this 109 price and we get this little range here as well. Uh, these are all little things to help you, you know, price your tickets in a, in a proper fashion. If we priced it at $94, we would be quite below the range within the section. Uh, so I go ahead and uh, want to see what the tickets in that section are actually listed for. I can go ahead and get those details by clicking down here. See all current tickets for sale. So I click that little button. What it's gonna do, it's gonna open up the map for me, the actual seat, not the seating map, but the, the floor map. And then it will actually have the section that my tickets are listed in. It'll put a little green box where my tickets are actually located in the map itself. And then it'll also give me on the side a bunch of options of other tickets listed in the same section at their various price points, which is very, very interesting. So as you can see here, row D, row F, row H, these are all priced in a similarly level of, you know, they're all actually priced the exact same, which is kind of funny. So the other things you can do though, is you're not just forced to say, okay, what is it my, what are the tickets priced in this section? Sometimes you can look in a whole slew of sections. So if I clicked, you know, across all here and I clicked all across here, now I have this entire, you know, similar level of, you know, seating across the entire venue. I can basically pick and choose where I want to see the different pricing levels of tickets. Your prices, they kind of range all over the place from 60 bucks all the way to keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I found some in row A in section 104, which is right over there, priced at 179.36. Now, if I want to see if there are any other row A seats, which is equivalent to what mine are, I can just do a control F, uh, search for row A, and we'll see that there are actually a few options. So in section 117, uh, there's priced at 120 per ticket. And then in section 104, there's one at 179 a ticket. And then there's also ours, which I was finding behind the screen, which are also priced currently below these prices. So again, you can use this to kind of compare and contrast, see how much prices are going for for similar tickets in a specific area or specific areas. Uh, go ahead, price according to that. Again, pricing, at the same level as someone else or slightly below or slightly above, it doesn't necessarily mean your ticket will sell faster or slower. It really comes down to where the actual individual who wants to buy the ticket, what their preferences are. So obviously we are not mind readers, so we don't know where everyone wants to sit at all times, but in general, if you look across the venue, there will usually be people sitting in all the different sections because there's people who want different preferences, different seating locations, different rows, different seat numbers, all sorts of different things that can happen. So what we'll say here is we're gonna try and price these tickets uh, similarly to some of the other ones uh, that we see. I think we want to be priced similar to this guy, 179.36 each. You can go ahead, price them at, you know, something more random, like 199.42 can be done. It will not stop you. It is a fantastic number. Let's go with that one. You can see here on the range though, that now that we put this price, it thinks that we are, you know, well outside the range of ticket prices in that section. Doesn't mean the ticket will not sell, but also does not mean the ticket will sell. It's just, just a guy telling you, hey, you're outside the normal range. Doesn't mean it won't work, but it might not. But it might, but it might not, but it might. Once you figure out the pricing, go ahead, scroll down a bit more. Say, hey, you'll get paid this much, this much to sell your tickets through us if they actually end up getting sold. 
Now, if you're curious why 199.42 times two does not equal 354.96, it's because there's something called a service charge or a seller charge. So over here, you can see this little blue button. How is this payout amount calculated? There's actually a selling fee that is associated with getting your tickets sold. Uh, and in this case, Ticketmaster will charge 11%. Now, it can be a bit confusing to see it with this number. So we're actually gonna go back, change this to $200. Obviously you can do it with the calculator, but this will require much less thinking. So as you can see here, seats in section 108, row A, seats five and six, listed for $200 each. Again, ticket prices are listed per ticket, not for the entire package. Uh, and then you'll see there's service fees. So this service fee is how much it would actually cost you to sell the ticket on Ticketmaster. So you can see here, very simply, 11%, $22 per ticket, Ticketmaster will collect to actually go ahead, get these tickets listed, sold, all that fun stuff. Because what Ticketmaster is doing, they're saying, hey, we're providing you a platform to actually go ahead, list your tickets, ensure that they are 100% valid to whatever buyer is going to buy them. And then we're actually gonna manage any of the marketing costs, any of the backend transactional costs. We're taking all of that on. And for the small price of 11%, they're gonna go ahead, list your tickets. They're gonna try and get them sold. And then uh, they'll kind of take care of all of that. You just take care of the pricing. We'll do everything else. Important that if you're just trying to recover your face value of whatever you've paid for these tickets, make sure you go through this slowly, slow enough that you're, you're charging a slight premium to make sure that you actually can cover your entire cost. If you're just looking to sell it just flat face value, don't care about the seller fee at all, then by all means, go ahead, put the exact same price in. Won't stop you. They will totally let you do it. But again, you will not get all your money back. End of the day, tells you your payout, tells you how much you get paid. In this case, $356, fantastic. If all that looks great, you can go ahead, hit continue. If you no longer want to continue with the selling of your tickets, uh, go ahead, click the cancel listing. Now, hitting continue will not Let's take us right away because we still have one more step to go. You'll see here, we're now in step three, setting the payment method. Select how you would like to get paid. So when you're actually going through this step, there are two things to keep in mind. One, they're gonna put money directly into your bank account via direct deposit. So to do that, you have to make sure that you have to have a bank account essentially set up for this. Uh, so you have a few options, debit card USA, checking account USA, savings account, checking account, savings account. CA, Canada, USA, USA. If you need to know where to find this information, just contact your bank or go on your bank account online. You should usually be able to find that. They'll have it listed somewhere, usually with the direct deposit information. If you try to set that up, you'll get all the details you require. And then there's the second section down here. If the event is canceled, postponed, or rescheduled, rescheduled, use this card to refund the buyer. When there's an event change that occurs, material event change, so the event date has changed completely, the event time has changed significantly, or the artist themselves or the event promoter, they have actually you know, postponed or canceled the event entirely. What you normally do, if you had just you know, normally bought the tickets themselves from, from Ticketmaster directly, they would say, okay, you know what, we're gonna give you the option to actually request a refund. As a normal pickup buyer, that's very simple, very easy to understand. You go ahead, click the little blue buttons, refund your money, no questions asked, fantastic. With Ticketmaster Resale, from the final buyer's perspective, it works the exact same way. What you are responsible for is what you actually collected when you sold those tickets. You are not responsible for the additional service charges and you know any Ticketmaster fees that are added on top of your sell sale price. That is all for Ticketmaster to deal with. So in this case, I believe we were going to receive $356. So you would have received $356 when those tickets actually sold. So that is the amount of money that is going to then be refunded back to the buyer. Plus whatever Ticketmaster has charged on top of their service fees, they'll go ahead and you know refund that to the buyer themselves. From your perspective now, you bought those tickets, you sold those tickets, and now you've refunded those tickets. So the, these two, the sale and the refund, those have now netted themselves out. You are now out the cost of purchasing the original tickets themselves. So now you can go ahead, request that refund, all will be well, get your money back from that. End of the day, you will be made whole. If you're happy with it, click the big blue button. If you're not happy, you still have another chance to go ahead, hit cancel. So as you can see here, you click the button, it says ticket listing complete, well done, here's what to expect. Ticket listing will be live shortly. We'll send you a confirmation email, blah, blah, blah. You can edit or delete your listing at any time. So if you listed it too fast, click that blue button just a bit too quickly. Go ahead, you can still edit your listing, not a problem. And then lastly, it says here, your payment will be automatically deposited once the tickets actually sell. So within five to seven business days after the tickets actually sell, you'll go ahead and actually get paid, get your money, collect that moolah, and you'll feel great. What is this last thing down here? Notice, listings are subject to change. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's click the little blue button, see what it says. 
It's actually just taking you to the FAQs of Ticketmaster's listing and sale of tickets. This is actually a very good screen for you if you want to, again, get more nitty-gritty details of how this actually works. Now, what do they mean when they say ticket listings may are subject to change? What they mean is that an event itself is not 100% going to stay live, stay active every single time. So what it says here, fan-to-fan -fan resale may be removed at any time at the event, tour, or venue's discretion. So again, they have all the power. You can only list the tickets if it is an available option. If the sell button is actually grayed out, it is no longer an option for you to list those tickets. And unfortunately, you cannot, cannot resell those tickets on Ticketmaster. Doesn't mean you can't resell them elsewhere. We can dive into that later on. But for Ticketmaster purposes, you will not be able to resell those tickets on their website. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, so what we can see here, there is a done button, a view my listings button, view available tickets for this event. So what I would actually suggest doing next is clicking this third button right here. What it's going to do, it's going to actually bring you to the event page itself, show you all the listings, and you can go ahead and see your little red icons on the map. So again, our seats were located in section 108, row A, seats 5 and 6. These little red beauties down here. As you can see here, I have listed tickets for $200 each. And then Ticketmaster has decided to also show $42 of fees, including taxes. Ticketmaster, they're in the business of making money. So they're going to make money on your sale as well as on the sale themselves. So what do I mean? They're going to charge you a seller fee to actually go ahead and list those tickets, manage the distribution of those tickets, get them from more your verified account to their verified account once they actually sell. And then they're also going to charge the buyer some money saying, hey, we're going to go ahead and manage this process for you. Get these tickets from one person to the next person. We're going to manage all the payment processing, blah, 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 blah and they're gonna charge you for it. But as you can see, tickets are listed, they're active, they're good to go. Uh, and so if I go back here, I can actually go ahead and now click view my listings. You can see here auto senators, there is a listing that is currently active and I can go ahead and just quickly make the changes for these tickets. And again, we'll see the same screen that we saw before when we were listing tickets. So we can go ahead, raise the price, lower the price, do whatever we want with the price. So if I do want to change the price, I'll make it $300 now because I'm oh, 200,000. That's a lot of money. I want to sell for $300 a ticket. I'm going to go ahead, click submit edit. And then it's just going to circle, spin around for a little bit. And then it'll say, okay, your ticket listing will be updated shortly. Please allow up to two hours for your ticket listing to be updated. I know what you're thinking. I know. I, I am a mind reader here. Why would it possibly take two hours? For these tickets get listed and updated yet again. This is ridiculous. It took all like 30 seconds for them to do it the first time and now we're just going to take two hours to make this change? Huh? They say this just to give themselves, you know, some, some leeway in actually going ahead and updating the prices. But again, it's in their best interest to actually price this and update this as fast as possible. If you decide to change your price, it will not be updated immediately. There will be a bit of a delay. So don't fret, don't worry if you see it taking some time. Again, they're giving themselves two hours of buffer time to Go ahead and make that change. Obviously, it'll be, it should be done before then, but it can take a little bit of a more wait. Last thing here, when your ticket actually sells, uh, you're going to get an email from Ticketmaster saying, hey, congratulations, your ticket has sold. Uh, and then they'll, get, again, give you all that same information. Tickets will be, you know, payment process will take about five to seven business days. It'll go into bank account XYZ, blah, 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 all that fun stuff. So the last couple of things you need to know here, when you list tickets on Ticketmaster, these tickets are still active. They're still valid. The barcodes are still good. So if you decide that you want to actually give them to your friend and then decide you don't want to actually sell these tickets on Ticketmaster anymore, you can go ahead and do that. Don't have to worry about these tickets not working. They are still 100% valid, still 100% real. The barcodes are still 100% yours. You have not given them away to anyone. They are still directly tied to your account. So if you want to now go ahead and cancel your listing. So if you go to my tickets and then at the top right, click view my listings, you can go ahead there. And what it's gonna show you again is the same page we were just at. So again, it's gonna show you your active listings, your sold listings and your expired listings. So if we decide, hey, I'm gonna give these tickets to my friend. I think it'll be a great birthday gift for them. I'm gonna go ahead, click this remove listing button. Now it's gonna ask you, are you sure you want to remove your ticket listing? Uh, you know, cancel because you might've clicked by accident or you've decided, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to commit, and I'm going to remove my listing. And ta-da, your listing has been removed. You have successfully canceled your ticket listing. Your listing will be removed. The tickets will be returned to your Ticketmaster account. No additional action is required. Fantastic. At this moment, tickets have been removed from Ticketmaster's fan to fan resale program. They are no longer active for others to buy. You have now returned the tickets directly back to your account. You can go ahead, do whatever you want with these tickets.
All in all, it's a very simple process, very easy, very intuitive. I would say it, it does not take very long to go ahead and actually, you know, list these tickets. The hardest part is one, setting the actual price to say how much you want to sell them for. And then two, just again, managing the listing in terms of making sure that the price is where you want it to be. Now, I would not say go ahead, check every single hour on the hour, how my tickets sold, how my tickets sold, refresh, 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 me. Don't do that. That's ridiculous. Absolutely insane. It is serving no purpose. It can feel like you just, you want to see if it's going to be done. It's very tempting to just constantly be checking. But again, people are constantly looking for tickets. So sometimes some events may take longer for it to sell. Some may take less time for it to sell, depending on how much you, how aggressive you are with your pricing. If you just want to get rid of them right away, price them really cheap, and then obviously make someone really happy. Or you can be on the other opposite end of the spectrum, sell them very expensively, and then expect and hopefully wait for someone to come along and say, hey, I'm going to pay you $10,000 for these seats. You are not in control of what someone else is going to do. So don't feel bad if it takes more than a few days or weeks for the tickets to actually go ahead and get sold. It's not a problem. These things Things take time, so just have to be patient. Just wait. Make don't check back every couple days. See if the prices in your section in the similar rows are around the same prices where you are. If you find that your tickets are becoming much more expensive than ones that are in a better row or better section than you, then you might want to consider reducing the price down. If the exact opposite happens, you find that your price is quite low compared to everybody else. You have the option of again raising the price up a little bit, up a lot of it. You have a lot of you have a lot of options for how you want to manage your listings. As you have more and more listings, it can become a bit more daunting in trying to, you know, manage all of them, stay on top of them, see how each of them are doing. But if you're just selling the one set of tickets that you have, it's it's a very simple process, I would say. It does not take too much time. It just takes a couple of minutes to go ahead and actually update that listing. Do you have any other questions now about Ticketmaster's resale program, their fan to fan resale program? If yes, let me know in the comments below. I want to be able to answer all your questions. It can be a bit confusing the first time you do it. But again, like I said, like I showed you, it, it's a very intuitive, simple process. And just again, because it's all integrated within the Ticketmaster ecosystem, there's actually nothing you need to do to go ahead and deliver the tickets. Ticketmaster takes care of all of that for you. So it's great in that regard. There are a few downsides though. So updating the ticket prices, they can be slow. The maps, they're not always the best. It's there and you know, trying to compare your ticket price to someone else's ticket price can be a bit daunting, a bit of a challenge, a bit of a pain. And then obviously the last thing is just, you know, you have that feeling, oh my God, I need to sell now, but it doesn't always work out that way. So again, there's a lot of challenges there as well, but it can be a very easy way for you to actually go ahead and sell those tickets. I would recommend it if you're just starting out, you just, you just have the one or a couple of pairs of tickets that you want to sell. It's a great process for that. It's very easy. There's no worries at all. Once the tickets are actually sold, everything is managed by Ticketmaster. You'll see everything. It's very transparent in that regard. Uh, so again, just make sure once they actually get sold, go ahead, check your bank account, make sure the full amount of funds are there. If there are any questions, go ahead, contact Ticketmaster. And if there aren't any questions, then just collect your newfound dollars and your newfound wealth. Fantastic. You might have made a bit of money, you might have lost a bit of money. You might have just got all your money back. Now, with all that being said, uh, there are a few other places where you can actually go ahead and list these tickets. So if you click over here, I'm going to have a video which actually talks about how to list these tickets on StubHub next. If you're interested in listing tickets there, go ahead, click that little icon. If you want to learn some other things about listing tickets, I will throw up some more video links for you in the future. If you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I have lots of great content coming out every single week. And see you guys next time.